Hi, it has been a long time that I haven't uh, recorded a video and this week I want to talk about the Turkish military industry. Why? Because as you might uh, remember, Turkey has uh, started an operation in the northern uh, Syria and this has attracted a lot of uh, negative views from uh, our, uh, our Turkish uh, allies from Western uh, countries, the NATO members and the uh, United States of America. As you might maybe be well aware that uh, the NATO members, which is also EU, they have already started uh, uh, sanctions on the military equipment purchase or sales. Uh, and uh, the US Congress has been uh, concerning this uh, to apply uh, seriously. Now, this week we want to talk about what if uh, this uh, US also sanction might be uh, real and what will be the effects on Turkish uh, military uh, industry or the populations in northern Syria and what might be the impact in the future. So let's look at all these scenarios now. So let's start. Now, I told you, Turkey has started the operation in northern Syria to push terrorists from the regions. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's all the, uh, along the Syrian-Turkish border in 30-35 uh, kilometers in depth. Turkey wants to uh, create a buffer zone or a safe zone so uh, they can again uh, uh, allocate all these people uh, from Turkey, uh, from Syrians to Turkey back to again Syria and those people living in that region. So they, they want to, or Turkey wants to <coughs> set up a secure zone. They want to also uh, build new buildings or accommodations. They want to also start businesses, so the recruitment uh, facilities or um, activities of the terrorist groups will also be reduced. Uh, but due to some reasons uh, and also some negative views in the Western countries, uh, countries like Germany, France, Belgium, uh, UK, uh, they have always started uh, major sections equipment sales. To Turkey. Uh, is it important for Turkey? Not very much. Turkey depends on much, much more um, the international sales to uh, US. But the negative uh, news is that uh, US also, or Congress, uh, has been uh, applying pressure on the White House uh, to start with all these sanctions. So, what does it mean for Turkey? So, if this is going to happen, and the uh, US Congress is uh, stating that they want to establish a group where they are going to make some uh, investigations about the uh, mistress of the uh, Turkish army to the people over there, especially the Kurds. Uh, if it is going to be substantiated by evidence, uh, then the US Congress is going to uh, uh, request or ask uh, White House to apply sanctions that they are already ready in place. And the first one they are talking about is the military industry uh, sanctions. Is it going to affect Turkey? Of course, there is no doubt about that. But everybody is talking that it's going to affect very bad. Is that true? No, it's not. It's not that uh, de uh, detrimental uh, to Turkey and Turkish uh, military capabilities. Indeed, there will be some problems about the maintenance, the spare parts, and especially advanced uh, equipment uh, weapons, such as we buy from the uh, United States, like the missiles that can be guided from the ground forces uh, to the target, or other uh, advanced technologies that we are asking for, about especially the air fighters jets. Uh, for sure, they are going to be negatively impacted. Either this might take a couple of months, and or a couple of years, it is granted it will be affected negatively, but it will only uh, reduce some ability of the Turkish army, but it will not stop the uh, military operations in uh, northern uh, Syria. Thus means uh, Turkish military will keep the uh, ongoing operations in Syria, northern Syria. The problems will only intensify if this is going to happen. In, and Turkey is going to start seeking for other suppliers. 
don't forget that it's not going to be the first time that U.S. will or might apply a sanction, a military equipment sales sanctions to Turkey. Uh, in 1974, when Turkey uh, started operations in Cyprus, the uh, United States immediately allocated or started the sanctions. It had uh, been on the table for three years, and after three years it had been lifted off. Uh, it greatly affected the uh, ability of the Turkish military forces, not only domestically, but also in uh, Cyprus too. And Turkey, after that, learned the lessons, and in 1980s starting, they started to set up all these companies. Now, I'm going to bring you a table here that I have prepared for you. And you are going to see, for the last 20 years, what's our foreign sales, uh, or purchases, let's say, and uh, and also in relation to the sales that we have conducted. And also, interestingly, I also find it very important to show it to you, demonstrate to you that uh, how Turkey is interested in uh, research and development activities, which is very important, especially in relation with our sales to foreign countries. Now, 20 years, or in 1974, so let's say, we were around 60-70% dependent to foreign industries. Uh, and basically, we were buying almost everything. Now, after that, we learned the lessons that, hey, if we are a country where we are having all these threats and our allies is not supporting us, then we have to do our own capabilities, create our own capabilities. So, starting 80s, we have started to set up these businesses or companies. They have started all these things. Especially by end of 20, uh, or 2000, or sorry, uh, 1990s, end of 1990s, as you will see from the chart that our purchases were increased from, I would say, 7 billion to today, 19, 20 billion range. It's very important for us. But the most important, what you are going to see, and I have allocated here that, in, after 2007, where we have started some couple of um, millions of uh, uh, research and development activities, as of today, it is uh, 7 or 800 million in a year that we are spending. In US dollars, by the way, they are all the numbers. Uh, Turkey has started to invest on research and development activities now and you will see in line that especially after 2011 uh, our sales to uh, foreign countries have started really increasing uh, dramatically uh, as of today we are selling around six to seven billion US dollars to foreign countries and we are buying around I will say 18 19 uh, billion uh, US dollars. Now, uh, this is very important for uh, to remember. Let's say, uh, does what is uh, Turkish also alternatives in that regard? Is yes, if US and NATO is not going to align with Turkey in that regard, or will keep all these sanctions and which will affect Turkey to some levels, but not all together. You know, it will collapse uh, our ability. Uh, there are countries like Belarus, Pakistan, um, China, and Russia, and maybe you are aware or not, but uh, Turkey is very close to uh, close the deal about uh, SC or Sukhoi 35. We know that uh, they are in uh, very much advanced in the, these uh, negotiations, and uh, President also Putin, uh, Russian President Putin, uh, also mentioned that if deal is going to be closed, we are also interested to. Um, set up a company in Turkey and do the design together for SU-57, uh, including the productions. As maybe you know or not, but SU-57 still has some uh, design problems. And, uh, but majorly it's a, uh, it's a, it's a component, uh, one unit uh, component ready, um, more or less ready to, uh, to be produced, manufactured. But uh, that will add a lot of ability to the Turkish industry, for sure. So in that regard, Turkey is not uh, alone. Also, I have to remind that when the operation in Northern Syria started, Turkey, uh, because of the uh, European Union's uh, sanctions, we started buying some ammunition, I would say, from Russia. Uh, so that shows two things. First, such sanctions will only uh, intensify the relations between Russia and Turkey, which Russia is really looking forward for that. And which means that the NATO abilities in the, I would say, southern flank will be uh, reduced uh, greatly. 
secondly uh, Turkey is giving the message that uh, look this is very important for me I don't care what is going to happen with us or between us but I am going to protect the border and I'm not going to allow these terrorists to come and to uh, threat me in my uh, own land so you have to understand that uh, on that regard it will be a very big problem within the NATO community because Russia is going to be uh, put its foot between uh, Turkey and the NATO members including United States secondly Turkey is going to say that look uh, I am really serious about this you are not understanding me either we, we find the amicable solutions or whatever it is we don't care uh, we will see what will happen with these things but even if it will be a couple of months or a couple of years as a sanctions uh, there is something that the the, the foreign countries, uh, international committee is uh, forgetting and I have to really intensify this. You see in the chart that I have again going to bring forward to your attention that Turkey has started investing on uh, research and development activities starting especially by 2010-11. It's new I know and it all depends about economic developments and so on and so forth but however the, Turkey has started this. And it's very serious about this. Now we are uh, producing all these ammunitions and other uh, technological uh, military equipment to the military uh, services. And the purchase is really high in numbers coming especially from 2007-8 up until today. It's uh, from 1 billion, now it's 6 billion. It's not that really bad. I mean, if you add these all numbers up, you know, I mean, uh, in 2016-17, the, uh, the total purchase of the Turkish uh, military is around, I would say, 25, 26, 27 billion US dollars. You know, if you put them all together. And this also shows, and this is more than 10 or 10% uh, of the, our GDP or our uh, budget, Turkish budget, is like 13%. It's high. While Russia and other countries are reducing this, Turkey is pushing and increasing its military uh, expenses and why because of all these threats turkey is proceeding and they are saying that northern flank is a problem southern flank uh, is problem uh, west east everything is a problem they are renewing the army new ships new tanks they are putting research developments for the engines of the uh, tfx uh, air fighter uh, that turkey wants to do the engine and we have already uh, completed more or less the design for it uh, but still have a big problems about those yes we have problems but I am asking only one question and one question that everybody all the international community members should remember what if and I'm telling this really honestly I'm asking this what if Turkey will be succeeded in uh, advancing in military technology which will happen eventually while these problems existing between Turkey and international community what do you think about how uh, Middle East might look from now to a decade I will say because this technological advancement can really uh, take place uh, quickly uh, we are not like a Middle East country or other countries uh, there is a high advanced uh, universities here where we have also have the uh, youngsters uh, or young people abroad and uh, they can be easily attracted or they are already been attracted and come back to here Turkey let's say and all these things might start with so once these are going to be achieved how do you think that the Middle East uh, is going to look uh, like in 10 years to 20 years later time it will be much more different and not only Middle East by the way I have to say the Balkans will be very 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 different I have to say also our relation with Russia and other countries will be very very, very different uh, I think what is now going on that the international community is not really understanding the Turkish perception of threats uh, really is uh, is I will say making the country uh, disappointed uh, with all these things uh, most of the international community that we are, or Turks are really uh, heavily uh, pushing on Kurds. I totally don't believe that. Uh, and really don't understand our uh, our fears about the terrorists that we are facing uh, with or against. 
but uh, I am saying that if we are going to you know uh, have this kind of relation yes then our relations with the Western and Eastern everything will be changed once we achieve the high technological uh, place it's going to be like you know 100 years I don't believe it's going to be 100 years it will be 10 20 years we will be there I believe because we have all these abilities but the problem we have is we can't combine them because of the structural reforms we needed democratic uh, reforms we needed and also the bad economy I mean corruption is hiding in Turkey that's why it's a problem for us also uh, but as I said again what if we achieve this level and how do you think that our relations will then uh, will be shaped uh, that's the question that I am asking. So I, I think uh, Turkey and uh, the Western countries should find an amicable way now if they want to retain uh, good relations in future. Because Turkey, regardless uh, with Western uh, countries' uh, support or not, is going to advance the technology uh, in uh, social life, civil life or also in military equipment and uh, once these um, balances are going to change and uh, the future relations really truly uh, highly dependent on the relations that we have today and unless we retain a good relations i don't believe that the middle east will be really a good place or a balkans or other place it will be a good place in future because then it will be a very very different story anyway if you like this video there is a like button underneath please press on it and also uh, if you uh, become a member of our channel you are going to hear first and we will inform you the first with our uh, the global developments thank you for watching yeah have a, have a nice day bye